is uh, the duck, Mr. Brian English. He's going to explain to you the full process to recover from the, the kind of injury I just uh, had. Um, so let's see it. Is uh, we need sometimes a, a specialist world in I've explanation. Spent, I've spent too much time with this man this year, but it's been a pleasure to get to know him. That's one. The only value when a player gets injured is you get to know them well, but uh, not good for him. Okay, that's no, all right. Yeah, let's start. So, so that medial malleolus snapped. Okay. With, with the belief being from our point of view that this will have happened uh, uh, because there's a stress fracture. Okay. Um, we're looking into the data on your movements over the last month mm -hmm. and we saw that when you recovered from your thigh injury you developed more or less a 50-50 balance right to left. This is with the GPS monitor monitoring the shock. Okay. Left to right, it can pick that up. Whereas taking our eye view potentially slightly, maybe this thigh that you previously injured started to switch off a little. Okay. Where does that come from? Um, you had such a major injury on that muscle. So we're working, working, working to get it right again. You get back, you start playing, and we now know with this new muscle, maybe it will get lazy. Okay. because of the nature of the injury or maybe we need to soup continue throughout your career to super train that thigh whereas that that's the normal one okay, maybe this one will always need a little bit of extra the trouble is when you go back into training you all those extra little bits of work that we do by the nature of this sport because this is a game every three days people stop doing the little extras okay I understand and maybe in your career how old are you now 29. 29. Maybe in your career now, the next 10 years, because of that injury you had there to the muscle, of, you know, two times per week for an extra 15 minutes, we need to do high level uh, deceleration. Okay. So potentially, this is guesswork, maybe the increase in load gave the stress factor on the left, mm -hmm. or that this muscle stopped acting as a, uh, a brake. Okay. So the left leg. Compensation. Had compensated and had to do more. So you started to go towards a 47 53 balance. So maybe the load, maybe the fact with the left leg breaking more, we're just trying to find what, why did this happen. Okay. So those are the reasons we've come up with so far. I don't think there's anything physiological going on, um, but balance is, is, is the key thing. Um, I need to uh, show you scan some time on you, on your video. Yeah. But you know, you've had those screws with Mark Davis put through, so you can, the stress factor that, that, that goes through the, the meat, won't show very well, will it, but that goes through yeah, the yeah. medial malleolus. So, sorry, oh, okay, carry on. Rob. Got no. the visit of Rob. A second uh, doctor. Uh, you can correct if I'm saying it wrong. So we've got two uh, specialist advice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so they so three a few screws going through there. You, you said it. I thought it was three. You said it was four. Four. Um, I obviously fell asleep when they were putting the. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah I've I seen know. it done so often. Anyway, so you you bring it back together. You put the screw through one side, right to the other side of the bone. So. It, just keeps it tight. Okay. More or less to the point of view where you could walk on them and it's probably okay. okay. But for complete mistake, you know, the surgeon likes you to not walk on it, not to stress it, don't stress the bone. So that's why we have to, we go through a non weight bearing phase at the moment. Okay. Yet to clarify exactly how long that non weight bearing phase lasts, but it's going to be in the region of uh, two weeks. So when you come back from being away for a few days. Yeah. Was your okay. You wanted to go through the phases of rehabilitation? Yes, please. Well, this is... So you can explain to uh, our yeah. friends on YouTube. Uh, uh, there, was a, there was a man who, who I learnt a lot from in rehabilitation. Okay. Um, called Stefano Della Bella. He's Italian. Okay. Um, he runs a company called Isokinetic. And I, I particularly like the way they do rehabilitation, or the phases of rehabilitation. 
So there's a general aspect of this, but with any. So you were like his student. Yeah. yeah. A bit. Here's Yoda. Okay, he's the Yoda, the master. I'm Luke. Yes. 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 Are you yes. take him over? Eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank Junior. Your experience is really appreciated. It's plagiarism. That's that's what I. So you'll never get maximum power out of your ankle the way you move unless you're pain free, you know, swelling, you've got full range and flexibility. Then and only then can you get maximum power and endurance. So that's why with the team I always like to go back through these phases. Okay. I think there's no point in doing pad work if you haven't got range of movement uh, of the ankle. So okay. it's so important when we start, you know, get you back when you've been away for a few days that we, we really Thank work hard on, on, on getting that okay. uh, range back. So obviously lots of power work we can do for the deep flexors and the muscles of the lower leg and, and lots of it, hence your endurance comes in. We can also work the whole body and that's why we work in the deep water, okay. doing your cardiovascular work and the, uh, the deep water exercises which you're very familiar with and your, um, <laughs> Fortunately. Uh, what's it the one that you like really, the, um, the racket water, ball? water polo. Ah, the water polo, okay. Racket ball we come. That comes later on. Later, okay. So the water polo. Because I'm, okay, yeah. I'm the master in racquetball. Just I like, really like to think he's the master at all sports. <laughs> it's difficult for me to argue with that, especially when he's injured. You've got to keep him happy. Yeah, keep, exactly. Keep, keep me happy. Proprioception. And uh, coordination. So the presumption is now that we've got decent power and endurance. Proprioception is a uh, balance or sense where you are in time and space. Okay. Um, and coordination again, just just doing coordinated movements. You know, so on your ankle, that the ability to, in a way to hop and hold, okay. and ability to balance. And you can't balance properly unless you're going again. You've got good power and endurance. Okay. But starting to work on certain tasks such as running, landing, um, jumping, and able to ex execute those well. So an important phase to go through before you come on to. The final classic stage of rehabilitation for uh, most people, and that would include, you know, the general public as well, which is uh, uh, agility and skills, and that's again your, your football-specific movement that you would do, and the drills where you know we get you jumping, landing, coming down from a height, and again, unless you've got good proprioception, good coordination, good power, good endurance, would injure you doing this particular phase. Oh, okay. So that's why. I always like to go back to these phases, and if and if a player isn't doing quite well with agility, it must mean that we haven't ticked off the boxes mm, okay, in understand. one of these particular areas. So we're not just rehabilitating your ankle; that can fit in. You've got to rehabilitate the whole body, and then especially that prevention side as to making sure that this injury never happens again. And I think we've just got to be that extra vigilant on you, just to make sure that you don't. That the, the balance doesn't go, especially if you're playing back-to-back -back games and it's all recovery, recovery. Maybe on you, you know, that that's not good enough at the moment. That we need back-to-back -back games, but um, a bit of extra. Yeah, keep keep on looking. Just uh, 15 minutes, two or three times per week at high, oh, okay. high end of uh, agility. Yes. Because there are you know ways to measure this. Anyway, the last ones for the for the footballer for me, Rudy, is we would then do five. Oh, sorry, six and seven, and that's where we would turn that as a what's called RTT, return to training criteria. Okay. So we would go through all sorts of measurements that we know you're capable of doing in training. We try and reach them in rehabilitation to then hand you over to the coaches to say this player will will not break down. He's ready oh, okay. to go. He's done everything. So he's he's done maximal speed, maximal endurance. He's done the level of accelerations and decelerations that he would normally get into a game. He can stop maximally, he can kick long balls maximally, return to training criteria. Oh, okay. And obviously for you with your ankle, a lot of that would involve stopping and kicking, etc. Okay. And then they, and then seven would be return to play criteria. And we would tend to leave that with the coaches really, because it should be there them to judge by looking at you. He's not only is he fit enough, but he's actually he's, he's Ready to play for us, and okay. you know that, that that should be their eye as That's well. That's more, yeah, the manager who decides at this point. Yeah.